Um, hi. Uh, this quick demo is going to show what a student wanted to learn. And do you see, um, even though it's rough and it's pixelated, the fact that this line is very random? You see how the edge of this black shape is very random? I'm going to show you how to turn a simple shape. It's going to require Photoshop and Illustrator, how to turn a simple shape into one that has randomness, bring it into Illustrator and create a graphic brush, and then to turn something like that, that into what these lines are here. So you see how I've drawn this character out, okay? So that character, that dog character, or this guy here want to be randomized in their line work, okay? If that's what the student or the artist wants to do. So I have selected that just by grabbing the regular selection tool and clicking this, okay? That stroke, it's just a 0.5 stroke. Now, I've made this preliminary one so you can see that it turns a simple stroke into random stuff and then I can just change the width of the stroke and you can see that I'll zoom in and you can see if I go up in size I'll go to 0.4 and you can see the stroke just gets thicker and thicker so um, whatever you want to do um, you can just draw normally like I'll marquee all of these points all of these lines here and just click that and you can see how that turns totally random you can go back here and hit whatever size you want and you can create some very quick and some very cool randomness to your lines okay now let's discover how to see it so I'm gonna control Z back a couple of times let's one more time okay right there now it's back to normal and I'm gonna go up above here and I'm gonna create a random brush so how do I do that in my Google Drive set of asset files, I have placed in something called displacement maps. And I'll show you what those are in a few minutes when I get into Photoshop. So I'm going to set up a displacement map in Photoshop because it's quicker to do with pixelated images in Photoshop than it is, of course, in Illustrator. So I'm going to go into Photoshop and just create a blank page. Okay, so let me go to Control N or Command N, just hit the return key and I just have a blank page. I really didn't want... I'm gonna close that one and do it again because I just wanted um, a print size page. Something like that, which is perfect. So let's go. So now I'm gonna create a random shape. So how do you do it? Well, I'm gonna make a new layer above this background layer. I can turn off the background layer, which is white if I want. I'm gonna hit the M key in Photoshop and just make a long rectangle. Okay, that's for marquee. Now I'm going to fill it with black. So let's zoom in. Let me um, just make this move over a bit and move this over a bit. Now I'm going to fill that up. So I'm going to hit Option or Alt Backspace for Delete to fill that up with black. Now we're going to distort this. Okay, I'm going to have to do it three ways because I want to um, play with the edges as well. So let me explain. Okay, so I never ruin an original anything, so I duplicate the layer and turn it off. Now I'm on this layer one copy. I'm gonna go into filter and distort and displace, and then I'm gonna locate where I put that displacement map. So in the displacement map, you're given a set of displacement, horizontal scale and vertical scale numerical values. I'm gonna put it in as like eight to start. So I'll eight tab to eight on the horizontal and vertical scale, and now, I have to locate where I put that displacement map, which is here, I'm sorry for this, which is here, here, I have to go to my online folder, my canvas folder, which is the module system. Sorry that I'm explaining all this. I go into my advanced Photoshop modules. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, my new modules for here, the design module. And you would, of course, put it where you need to put it, but I'm going to open up the displacement map and show you. They are mostly a bunch of black and white files. Black in Photoshop displaces or moves pixels. White does not. Gray does a little bit. So I'm going to distort that black rectangle with this. Now if I were to zoom in on that, you'd see that there's a lot of black and white and gray. I want to remind you that in a layer mask, black eliminates, white retains. So white doesn't affect the pixels that I'm about to show you. Um, 
and black does. So if I use cracked and peeled paint, I want you to see what it does now, and it just distorted that line beautifully. Now, if eight was um, too much, then I'm gonna control or command Z back and just redo it. So you can play with it if you want. So you go to distort and displace, locate your, uh, I'll, I'll go to five, tabbing to five, and then I'll say, okay, and then you go to your displacement map. By the way, these are all available on um, Adobe's site for Photoshop, okay? That's where I got them from. So, and there's many more. So um, I'm going to use, again, cracked and peeled paint right there, and I'm gonna double click, and now I've displaced that to a nice amount, but I don't like what the ends did, okay? So I want to displace it even more to get a little bit more random on the edge. Now, how do you do that? Well, you only expose a portion of that to a marquee. So I've only exposed this much. Now I'm going to go to select, modify, and feather, and I'm going to feather that about eight pixels. Okay, so it's not going to be a quick displacement change, if you follow what I mean. So it's only going to displace this much of it right there. Let's go now and put it on about three or four. So do the same exact thing. And I'm going to go to three, tabbing to three, and then I'm gonna hit displace. And now you can see, after I double click, um, I wanna use this one. This one was the one that I just used. I wanna use this one, which is the next one, which is diagonal old paint displace. Now look at how I'm gonna do that and look at how it's gonna randomize the edge of that. Now maybe it didn't do it enough, so I'm gonna control Z back and I'm going, or command Z back, and I'm gonna do it again. This takes experimentation. You have to just experiment with it. Let me go to eight, tabbing to eight, and um, do the same diagonal paint displace. There, that's good. I like what that did. Now let me go back on it and do the other side. So let's just take this and go like that, surround it with this. I'll use the quick key, which is um, on a PC, it's function, Shift F6, okay, um, on a laptop, okay? It's function Shift F6 or it's just Shift F6. So I'm gonna hit this, go back to the filter, distort, displace, and I'm gonna locate the displacement map, which was this one, and I'm gonna go on that side. Now I have to customize this, okay? So I wanna really take the brush. I'm gonna deselect and take a paintbrush. Now I'm gonna zoom in on this edge because I want to show you something. The paintbrush is at 100% flow. I'm painting in, in um, black, but I'm gonna paint on a layer mask. You know that a layer mask is non-destructive, right? So I'm going to right-hand click and make sure I'm all the way hard. Normally I go all the way soft. I'll go somewhat soft. Now look at how I can randomize this to, and it's not, you know, things don't look great up front like this, but I'm going to randomize this just so I get a tapered feel to this. This, just so it just, I leave, leave just a little bit of that stuff, and I just want to click this to just taper that edge to here. Let's go to the other side and do the same thing. I'm just going to leave some of this here. I'm just, I'm just kind of playing. I'm not trying to make this look perfect there. I like what I've done right there. And now let's just randomize this and let's just go like that. Okay, fine, um, that's good. Now, what I wanna do is turn that really cool line that I've just created into paths because Illustrator doesn't care about pixels, right? So. You see this up here? I have to actually apply the layer mask. Now what I should do is duplicate it. Turn off the bottom one so I don't ruin it, right? Right hand click on the layer mask and apply the layer mask. Now I have just a perfect line. Now if I hold Command or Control and make a selection of that right there and turn that off, you can see it turns into this really cool selection. Now let me go to the Path Palette and make a work path. Okay, now it's a tolerance of 0.1 pixel and now there's a gorgeous path which I'm gonna control or command C on. Now let's go back into Illustrator. So I've copied this path, right? Because Illustrator recognizes paths, right? So now I'm gonna make a new layer here just so I can not ruin the layer that I have the line work on and hit control or command V and it's gonna paste as a compound path. And there is my path. Okay, now what I wanna do is fill that with, um, 
with black. So I'm going to double click this and it might have to do this kind of twice to fill it with black. Yes, I don't know why, but Illustrator, I could just go to the swatches palette. For some reason, it takes twice. <laughs> okay, three, t uh. <gasps> three times to fill it with black, which it should never take three times. Okay, it's like being ridiculous. So let me um, go back to here. Let's go back to the compound shape. Oh my goodness. Double click it again, because that's the fill. I don't know why Illustrator does this, but still is not filling. So let me go to the swatches palette. I should have done that in the first place and just click black. Um, there. Do you know that that took way too many times um, and I was not making a mistake? Okay, so now that's a cool line, right? Right. Well, let's click that line. So let's take the A key, which is the direct selection tool and marquee that. Now let's define this as a graphic style. Okay, so we're going to go into the graphic style and say new graphic style. Um, I actually want to go into the brushes and do it in the brushes. So I'm going to go to the brush palette. Sorry, I could do it either way, but it works better if I go to the brush palette and then define a new brush. Now I'm going to define an art brush and say OK. And now um, let me just call this random. I want to see if both of these actually work. So there's random. I'll just say random. Okay. Now I have a new random style right where I'm pointing. Okay. So this has turned into that in the brush palette. Okay. Now let's leave it there. Let's zoom in on his line here. Let's take the regular V key selection tool and click on that one line and click our new random style. Now, it's coming in at one point, so I can go to point one, and you can see that I can make this gorgeous random line that's in here. Now, if I wanted to, just for giggles, let's just um, marquee the whole top of the dog's face. I'm holding Alt or Option so that all the points turn solid. And let's just see how that works, okay? It might not look good, all right? I'm going to have to do a couple of things. I might have to turn some of them back into basic. But when I click it, it's going to go really super thick. So let's click that. Now let's go back to point one. I'm not panicking here. And give it a second. Just give it a second. And now I have kind of a neat graphic style that looks pretty cool. Now you can do more than just one style. Okay, you can do more than just one thing. So if I wanted to take that one line, I could easily go back to the basic, see? And then if I wanted to, I could up that. So I'm gonna control Z back a couple of times, and I'm actually gonna thin this line down. Okay, whoops, I need to go forward one. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let it do its thing. Okay, let's go 0 0.05. So let's go 0 0.05. I'm done right now. So you can see that I could just keep on playing on this, and now that looks better. Okay, that looks much better. Now if I didn't want, again, if I didn't want some of these, just take your A key and hold Option or Alt or your V key. A key is direct selection, V key is selection, and just click a single line and just go back to basic. And if you go back to basic, you can see you can turn that back to whatever you want. And I can go back to, let's just go to 0.25 on that to make it look kind of right. So now you can have both kinds of lines in your thing. And that looks great. I mean, can you imagine how long that would have taken me to do by myself? Okay, that would have taken forever to do individually. So that's how to do a randomized thing. You actually can create a brush style from Illustrator, now I, from Photoshop. Now what I should have told you, all of you, and pay attention to this. I'm gonna go back to Photoshop and show you something. So when I had this filled with black right there, when I had that path right there, and I went Control or Command C, I want you to understand that in Illustrator you should have, I should have shown you that in the preferences for Illustrator go down to clipboard and make sure preserve paths is checked and AICB is checked in Adobe Illustrator. Don't uncheck it. Check that box for Adobe Illustrator clipboard and preserve paths and that's why I was able to paste paths from Photoshop to Illustrator, 
or from Illustrator to Photoshop. It's very important that you do that. Thank you. I hope this has helped.